And then there were two. Well, Ramses, have fun getting your freaking balls chopped off. All right, welcome to Taste Take. Today, we're talking about the Love is Blind season seven finale, and I'm gonna be talking about it like you've seen it too. If that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button for your boy. For my regular taste takers, listen, I'm well aware that this whole video could have been 90 seconds, but no, no, no. I'm not gonna shortchange you. Was this the most exciting episode ever? No, it was one of the worst. But y'all deserve more, and I'm gonna try my best to give you more. Life gave me lemons. And by the end of this, we might have lemon water. Boom, episode 12. This one's called Leap of Faith. This is the finale. We start off where we left off, in the middle of that Marissa and Ramses dust up. It's kind of like when you flip through the channels, remember channels, and you see a movie that you're kind of interested in, but it started about an hour ago. So when you turn that thing on, you spend the whole time Looking for clues, trying to figure out what's going on. That's pretty much what Netflix is doing with this season of Love is Blind. So, all right, cool. We're here. Marissa's telling him that she wants to marry him. Yeah, that's great. We've been hearing that the whole season. What's really going on? We learned that apparently Ramses was talking to his niece's mother. Isn't that his sister? This dude is too fake progressive for his own good. Anyway, he talks to her and his brother, but for some reason, his brother's mother's son still has a lot of reservations, and a lot of that stems from his last marriage. He tells her, you know, I didn't find out until way later that I hurt my ex way more than I thought. This is where I'm starting to realize like, oh, he's, he's breaking up with her. He tells her that, yeah, my heart is telling me to just go forward with this, but I followed my heart before and I done messed it all up. He says, this just boils down to our energies. Can my energy and your energy coexist in the same space or is it gonna be too much for me? He's like, yo, in the beginning, I loved your energy. She's like, bro, everyone loves my energy in the beginning. Just shut up. My man actually said the line, no, 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 it's not you. It's me. No, bro, it's literally her. It's because you have a thing with her. It's like her and her energy. Then she tells him, look, bro, I don't think you should have come on this experience. Like, exactly. If he's telling her he needs way more time to suss out her energy, Love is Blind is a thousand percent not the show for you. Marissa's like, Ugh, how can I be so sure and you're not? I just want someone for once to be sure about me. Poor thing, it is tough to watch. Ramses tells her, I think we can both agree that I never want to see you again. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. He didn't say that, obviously, I'm just kidding. He says, there's nothing else to be said. She says, this is the worst day of my life. And if I had a time machine, I bet I can go back to when that Trump supporter broke up with her. And she said, this is the worst day of my life. Then, if this scene wasn't hard enough to watch, here goes the last piece of heartbreak. They're hugging goodbye. She's crying, sniffling and all, getting her snot up in his shirt. She's like, just tell me, are you sure? And I guess one of his rat tails was covering up his ear because he didn't say anything. And she's like, are you sure? And he's like, I'm so sorry. Man, this is tough because I like Marissa. Watching her break down like this is nothing that I could take pleasure in. But I know someone who can. So naturally, she calls her mom, Vanessa, and she's like, Mom, we called off the wedding. I didn't see it coming. And her mom's like, what? Oh, yeah, I'm here. That's terrible. Okay, okay, okay. You guys watched the show too. She obviously didn't do that, but she was thinking it. Marissa's ring is off. Go ahead and roll those opening credits. Sheesh. That's crazy. Okay, so before we get to the two freaking weddings, we got bachelor and bachelorette parties to attend. Starting with the dudes, they get the chance to go to a Washington Wizards game, which by my calculations may or may not have been the November 10th matchup where they lost a very close in-season tournament matchup against the Charlotte Hornets, but that's neither here nor there. Garrett and Tyler get to play that musical chairs game on the court. Somewhere out there, one of Tyler's kids is watching NBA League Pass looking like Leonardo DiCaprio and once upon a time in Hollywood talking to my son, that's my dad! Honestly, saying Garrett and Tyler instead of Garrett and Taylor is putting my brain in a freaking chokehold. Let's see if I could overcome. 
over to the bachelorette party and that shit's already looking hella boring. It's only two brides left and this crowd looking like they had to get people off the street to make the shit look lit. Like, who is this dude? You telling me he ain't one of the producers? Honestly, if you think I have anything else to say about that bachelorette party, you got another thing coming. All right, hold on. Let me see if I at least got another joke in my notes. Hold on. One second. No. Okay, Ashley and Tyler's wedding day. Ashley, if you're looking for a flower girl, Tyler might know someone. Okay, look how boring these notes are for this scene. Ashley getting ready. Tyler sent over flowers. Tyler getting ready. His boys call him out for reading. They say, this nigga reading? Then we see Tyler's brother Brian for the first time. My boy got that Ramses starter pack. And you know how these scenes go. You're hanging with your boys, getting dressed, drinking, playing pool. These guys want to know how fast Tyler and Ashley are going to the baby making station. And Tyler is the last person you should be asking that question to. Anyway, over to Ashley and her friends and this girl Telly pulls up. I'm like, why does this woman look so familiar? Anyway, I did a little digging around. This girl is a whole influencer, 2.3 million followers. So I'm sure I must have just seen her somewhere. So if y'all watching at home, like, why does she look so familiar? This girl is famous. Anyway, then she asked Ashley, which one of y'all is the big spoon? And I didn't know what she meant by that. But Ashley's like, oh, no, what I love about Tyler is that he lets me be big. Like, do y'all know that this man goes and gets me coffee every single day? The friend says, yeah, but who cooks? She's like, we both do. My ex couldn't even boil an egg. Girl, I didn't know you dated Nick. Okay, now this next part, y'all might say I'm reaching for content. I'm trying to make this video longer than 90 seconds, but I have to say I found it interesting. Her friends in there trying to tell her like, look, sis, all that cooking and cleaning shit, it don't last. Her point is that men only do that kind of stuff in the honeymoon stage. She looks at the other homie. She's like, yeah, she know. The homie's like, mm-hmm. Now, I'm sure this phenomenon that she's so eloquently explaining happens in some relationships. But is any part of this conversation helpful or nice to say on your friend's wedding day? Anyway, Ashley goes on to say, yes, I'm 100% sure that I'm going to marry this guy. The only way I don't marry him is if something catastrophic happens. Girl, you already done seen catastrophic. At this point, I'm pretty sure she's just talking about a natural disaster or the outbreak of COVID-22. Because honestly, if that official looks at that crowd and says, if there's anyone out there that thinks that these two shouldn't be married, speak now or forever hold your peace. And one of Tyler's blind kids busts up in there like the Wayne Wade did in a different world talking about some dad, no. Tyler will be up in there still lying, talking about some, oh my God, son, you can see it's a miracle. Actually, please hurry up and say I do so I can lead us in prayer about this medical miracle. And Ashley, Ashley will, Ashley will say I do. Wait a minute, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, we're still with the couples getting ready. Tyler tells his boys he's 100% ready. Then with Ashley, we find out that her dad is gonna walk her down the aisle just a little bit, and then he's gonna hand her off to her mom, who's then gonna give her away to Tyler. Her friend's like, damn, what do your dad think about that? Ashley's like, he gonna have to be fine with it. She says, you lucky you here, brother. And I love that for her. She lets us know that their relationship is great right now. But me watching it, I'm like, I love the boundaries that she's putting between her and her dad. It's like, we made some progress, but that don't mean you get all the privileges and the access in my life. Then we see Ashley grandma in there dropping that wisdom. Girl don't look a day over 40. Her grandma look younger than Marissa's mom and Hannah. But for real though, what a nice treat to see Ashley with her mom and grandma. I know y'all be fast forwarding these scenes, but this stuff is nice to see. They're both out there giving some sound advice that maybe someone out there watching don't have that kind of relationship and they can get something from it. So when we talk about these episodes being boring, like, yeah, they're boring, but there's some gold sprinkled along the way. This whole thing is a nice little conversation. It's basically about how when Ashley's grandfather died, that's when she started to look at forgiving her dad. And her mom says, look, you had a choice to make. And the way that you chose to heal from that trauma, I'm so proud of you. I mean, y'all keep, keep fast forwarding, but I'm gonna be watching the whole thing so I can report it back to you. I don't know, when I watch scenes like this and I see where Ashley's coming from and what she's been through, it's kind of making more sense why she will be open to giving Tyler more chances than maybe someone else would. I'm not saying what you did was right, I'm just saying some things are starting to add up. And speaking of family moments, we finally get to meet Tyler's mom, Dawn, and she got the right name, Dawn, because I bet she's been cleaning up his messes for years. Ayo! I don't know if it deserves a like, but I would take one. 
Okay, 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 get serious. Because it's Tyler, we know that he's immediately crying. His mom's like, what the hell? Yo, what's wrong? Is it nerves? Are you afraid that she's going to find out you taught your son how to ride a bike? He's like, no, 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 it's not that. I'm 100% sure I'm going to say yes. I'm going to be in shambles when I see her walking down that aisle. Like, my palms are sweating. My knees are weak. Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> this is serious. Okay, then just when you thought that Netflix was done dropping us off in the middle of conflicts, we find out that Tyler's dad was not invited to the wedding by Tyler. He's at home dying, but it's his own fault. What? And if I missed something, y'all please tell me. If maybe he described it in the pods or something like that. What? Where is he? What's happening? What? Get me there. Okay, now it's time to walk down the aisle. His grandma is also there. It's obviously his dad's mom. His walkout was so anticlimactic. And can they get a wider door, please? Okay, back over to Ashley. She comes down to meet her dad. This dude's wearing all black like he's going to Mercer's wedding. Sorry, that was too soon. Anyway, he's just out there saying all these Nigerian dad things. I don't know, I think he's trying to get his own Netflix show. Her dad starts crying. And we can tell kind of like how they describe the relationship between Ashley and her dad. This man has obviously brought her a large deal of pain. And I don't know Ashley personally, but I can tell that she healed from that pain, which is not easy and not everyone can do that. So I just got to shout her out. They're headed to the altar. And can someone get these people a wider doorway? Anyway, her dad drops her off with her mom and her mom brings her to Tyler. Tyler gives his vows. Of course, he's already crying. Ashley gives her vows and she's also crying. The officiant looks at Tyler, says, Tyler, do you take this woman, Ashley, who's better than you in every single way to have and to hold your kids' hands when they cross the street for richer or for $30,000 in child support poor, as long as you both shall live? Tyler says, I do. The officiant looks at Ashley, leans over and whispers in her ear, do you know about the kids? Ashley says, yeah, but they've never seen them before. Officiant says, okay, that's good. Ashley, do you take this man, Tyler, to be your unlawfully wedded sperm donor and get passive aggressive texts from his baby moms when you pick up the kids from karate and get them ice cream? But she specifically said, them kids don't need no damn ice cream and sickness ain't a health as long as you both shall live? Ashley says, I do. The whole time I'm watching this scene, I'm like, this really could have been a cute love story. And honestly, it might still could be. Now they're about to jump the broom and I bet Hannah's gonna come by and grab it so she can sweep up her kitchen. Also, Ashley ate with the I do shoes. Nice touch. I wish Netflix would have showed that, but they're not in the business of showing things. As soon as we understand that, we'll all be better off. Look, we'll see what happens at the reunion, but if she stays with this dude after the dust settles, who am I to judge? As long as she gets the truth, what she does with it is her business. Tyler ain't my friend, Tyler ain't my brother. I'm just watching a TV show, so I don't have the space to be judging this dude, especially if we don't hear his side of the story. But whatever Ashley and Tyler decide to do, I hope it's Ashley and Tyler's decision, not the internet. Just saying. Boom, Garrett and Taylor's wedding day. And for sure, these two geese was paid actors. And you already know how these GNT scenes go. Who even knows what be happening? I won't keep you long, and that I can assure you. Okay, the first noteworthy moment of these scenes, besides Taylor pulling up to get ready, already drippy, is the gift she gets from her mom. Cause was that like a piece of blanket from the hospital she was born at that her mom kept her entire life, saving it for her wedding day? Excuse me? Honestly, I'm getting soft in my old age, but that's a very nice thing to have. I can't even imagine. Then we finally meet Taylor's dad, Tom. Garrett's like, shoosh, he's white. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. They obviously met already. Just relax. We're almost done. Sheesh. Okay, okay, get serious. We find out that Taylor's dad, Tom, is wearing his brother's tie who died. And he's telling Garrett that, hey, when I was grieving, Taylor was right by my side. And when you need her to be there for you, she's going to be there. Her dad has no shortage of sad news because he's like, yeah, we got married and uh, I had eight groomsmen and there's four left. And that's such a simple sentence, but I've never even thought of it that way. We always talk about like siblings and like parents and stuff like that. Like how many have left, but like the people in your wedding party, it's just heavy. Back to Taylor. And like I said last week, her dress is eating. Then back to Garrett, his parents pull up. They're like, son, how you feeling? He's like, honestly, a lot better now. 
much lighter. I was feeling very heavy earlier. His mom was like, what do you mean? His mom's out there still low-key trying to talk him out of it while his dad's still out there just telling dad jokes. One thing I found very cool that I'm sure you guys picked up on is that Garrett's parents got married on the 13th. Taylor's parents got married on the 13th. And here they are getting married on the 13th. The universe is a simulation. Okay, real nice scene here with Garrett and his mom. She tells him, you've grown up to be such a wonderful man and it's been a joy being your mom. Now I spend most of my time making fun of Garrett's mom, but that's just a nice moment to have. All right, we're going to the ceremony and come on Netflix, two white male officiants, Marissa wouldn't stand for this. This one at least is trying to get some science puns off, so I guess he's cool. Garrett gives his vows and who knows what he said. All I know is that there was a part talking about how spicy things were in Cabo. Taylor's mom looking around like, they was fucking? Then Taylor asks her bridesmaids for her vows. Turns out it was just a binder full of Garrett's old DMs. She's like, explain this gift you sent to your lab partner in the summer of 2017. Just kidding. Taylor's vows were excellent, of course. She is a poet. She excels at everything she does. She has eaten this season alive with barely any blunders. It, it wasn't close. The efficient looks at Garrett. He's like, Garrett, do you take this woman, Taylor, who's way harder than you and whose parents are way more woke, but at the same time, she's going to screen every message you ever get as long as you both shall live? Garrett's like, I absolutely do. The efficient looks at Taylor. He's like, damn you, bad. Anyway, Taylor, do you take this man, Garrett, to have and to hold his phone while he's in the shower and hope that he ain't sending them freaky ass texts like his boy, Steven, but then tell you that nude he sent his ex wasn't a fact, but simply a detail? As long as you both shall live? Taylor says I do. And now they're married. The only thing left in the episode was a nice Garrett and Taylor reception and a nice Ashley and Tyler reception. They ain't have no confessionals from the rest of the cast. They ain't had no other flashbacks. They just, they just rolled the credits. This episode was so small, they should have just had one joint reception. Like let these families just mix and mingle because it's not enough content. And that's, well, that's Love is Blind season seven until the reunion, which the reunion, is, well, let me do my little ending thing. As always, thanks for checking out Tate's Takes. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like and that subscribe button in the comments. What are your predictions for the reunion? The reunion comes out on October 30th, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What, what are we going to see? What do you want to see the most? Of course, we want to see the Tyler Ashley drama. We've all seen the baby mama video. And if you haven't seen it, God bless you. It's a lot of stuff. This might be one of the most watched reunions because we got to see what Steven got to say. We got to see what Rams has got to say. We got to see what Tim got to say. We got to see what Nick got to say. We got to definitely see what Ashley got to say. Do we think that Garrett and Taylor and Ashley and Tyler are still married at, at that reunion? I hope so. Thanks for the time, y'all. Peace. Hey, okay, honestly, this is a new mic. So hopefully this shit sounds a little better. But man, what a, what a season. I don't know what I'm going to do for next week's video, but just stay tuned because it might be a live video. I know, I know. What even is a live video? But I'm going to figure it out again. Man, I need some Sour Patch watermelon. Y'all know about that. Okay, bye. And then there were two. Well, Ramses, have fun getting your freaking balls chopped off. Honestly, though, if given the choice, I bet Ramses would rather get his balls chopped off than have sex with a condom. I can't put that in the intro. Maybe I'll put it at the end.